Welcome back everyone. This is the State of the Nation. Now, President Gotabe Rajpaksa has appointed three individuals who are deemed to give him advice on the economic crisis. And mind you, we are yet to solve that issue. He also appointed a former deputy governor at the Central Bank uh, um, as its governor, Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe, and he too is trying his best to get this economic issue solved. Gunna Pure of Gunna, then Lukusas is out in Gulankil, now with Eka, Kernakota, Janata, Piano, May, Apikern, Vadapilile, Pratipale, and Meta Tatavata, Amarta, Gila Tama, and Pater Haragan Pulang, Mulima Paduki and Moga Natang, Anwasha, Balapur, Tudila, Piavilla, Alutang, Vadapilla, Karagan Ava, make a second plan there, name it. I was a canoe, the Baker, the Gahagan Pulan Tatino. Oh, if I was such a Martin Satam, and I ඊළඟ මාස වෙනකොට උද්දමනයේ සීට 28 29 30 දක්වා මේක යනවා. ඒතර අධිගත්ත තීරණයේ ප්‍රතිඵලය හෙටලා වෙන්නේ නැහැ. මාස තුනක් විතර එහාට ගිහිල්ලා එක ලැබෙන. වෙන්න තියෙන දේ සිද්ධ වෙන වෙලා ඉවරයි. ඒකට මුහුණ දෙන්න වෙනවා ජනතාව. ඒක ඒක පළවෙනි එක තේරුම් ගන්න. The protests and uh, everything that is occurring outside and the current conversations that's occurring in mainstream media is not addressing the real issue, the economic crisis. Everybody is acting like oh, the animal kind of scenario in Sri Lanka right now. So what are the solutions? First one, uh, what the government has resorted to right now is the is going to the IMF. Even though I personally do not agree with that decision. After all, I presented the evidence on this program many times. I think we have no choice but to go to the IMF. At least this time around, let's look at it in a, in a positive light. Maybe this is the time the IMF actually solves the problem and, and act, helps a nation to get out of an uh, economic crisis. Joining me now from the Data Ball is our own Dani Dutaramasam. Dani, good to see you again. Um, I know you have been uh, studying about solutions for the current economic crisis. And I, as I mentioned, uh, IMF seems to be one of the solutions we are looking at as a nation. The, gov um, the government is very interested in that particular solution. What else uh, should we be focusing on? What, what else uh, have you found that Sri Lanka is not pretty much focusing on, but, you know, we should be? Yes, Mahesh, a number of solutions that we can look at in this specific junction we are in within our country. Now, uh, on the offset, what we need to recognize is the president has appointed an advisory committee, an expert committee, to look into the primarily the negotiations with the IMF. Now, we see Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy, Professor Shanta Devarajan, and Dr. Shamini Kure being within this committee to aid the newly appointed central bank governor, uh, Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe, and the current finance minister, uh, Ali Sabri. Now, what we need to identify is, as uh, the g governor also mentioned a few days ago, that their primary objective is to get a favorable negotiation in play on the table towards Sri Lanka when it comes to the negotiations with the IMF. Now, that is one of the key solutions, one of the key things that this government is looking at. But there are other aspects, Mahesh, as we have very much covered within this program uh, that we can look into. One of those aspects is looking into our bilateral relationship, specifically with China. Now, the reason why we take China is countries, the nation of China, India, UAE, and Singapore are four of the key nations that we have imported products from. So the reserve situations within those countries have been primarily contributed by countries such as Sri Lanka. I mean, looking at China in general, we saw uh, former Energy Minister Uday Gamampil also making this point. The reserve situation goes over 3.2 trillion US dollars. Now, in that sort of scenario, that is the current uh, reserve situation, the United St uh, the US dollar reserve situation within China. Now, in that kind of situation, we see that China is capable of helping Sri Lanka within this specific junction. Now, moving forward, uh, particularly to the oil issue, something that we need to bear in mind is, India, which has taken up a lot of headlines pertaining to how they will be catering or they'll be conditioning their uh, oil demand within their country, they are looking at Russia. And Russia, which is in a position where they're counting who their allies are, we believe that is something that we can look into. That is not the only point, uh, Mahesh, because Russia has now opened doors and we have been speaking to a number of entities. We have even been speaking to the ambassador, the Sri Lankan ambassador in Russia, and negotiations are currently in place to get a good deal for oil to per for Sri Lanka to purchase oil from Russia. We do this because Russia has opened its doors to transacting or having their transactions done through rupees and that is currently uh, a window that has been opened to India. And we see that though Russia is in the biggest provider of oil to India, 
the, the, the supply has been increasing drastically given, given one and one the proximity and the fact that the, and the current situation that Russia is in. So the geopolitics of this entire scenario is something that we really need to study, Mahesh. Uh, certain solutions that we can really look at in the days to come. Over to you. Dhani Du Vithanavasam at the Data Wall. Thank you very much. Well, to wrap up tonight's program, Sri Lanka is at a very defining moment in its time and history. Decisions taken now will either make or break this nation. A nation that's getting battered over and over again from a conflict to economic hardships to foreign terrorists to a pandemic and now to a financial emergency. Sri Lanka has been redefining its story over and over again. But sadly, there seems to be no end in sight. When President Gotabe Rajapaksa was elected, many said that he would appoint critical people to the correct positions. He did that in other sectors of the governing process. Still, unfortunately, due to red tape and internal family politics, this was not so within the cabinet. Instead of seeing this crisis as a crisis, if the president can see this situation as glass is half full and take the necessary measures to sort things out just like he wants, I believe we still can have hope. Right now, there is no cabinet. And it seems like no takers from the old political establishment. This means the president now has the opportunity to appoint the people he wants to the position he wants and run the country the way he really wants. Actually, this time around, he has no excuses. Every single leader since independence helped us to get to this sorry point. As much as the leaders did this, Every Sri Lankan since independence also helped get Sri Lanka to this sorry state because we elected those leaders. So no, we are not without sin. If we have already got to this state through our actions, then it means we do have the power to get out as well. Despite I always oppose his political views and what he stands for, you still have to appreciate, even from an idiot, when he speaks something clever. Hmm. Lanka Minister of Parliament, we have a government that is not 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 a a Yes, it's trendy to say that we should do this for our children. But honestly, the future lies just like it says, in the future. Right now, this is our present. Let's take heed to first take the first step towards change. It was the king of pop, superstar Michael Jackson, who sang. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer if he wants to make this country a better place, take a look at ourselves and then make a change. Yes, I changed the lyrics a little bit. While considering all that, the state of our nation is critical and needs strong leadership to get the nation back on track. 